voltage. In addition to voltage, you'll also be learning about voltage sources, the symbols for those voltage sources for circuits. You'll also be learning about a quantity called potential difference. When you see the pause video indicator, please do that and take great notes. Early studies of electricity used static electricity generators such as the Van de Graaff generator and the Windhurst machine. Alessandro Volta in 1800, inspired by the animal electricity discovered by Galvani, created the voltaic pile. We now call this voltaic pile a battery, where he, this was uh, Volta's voltaic pile right here, and it's a uh, a sequence of dissimilar metals, so copper and then an electrolyte in between and then zinc and then copper and electrolyte in between and then zinc and copper and he piled them up and he stacked them up and this battery created an electric force that produced a continuous flow of charge called electric current. Until that time we just had static electricity that would dissipate really quickly but when Volta created his voltaic pile that continuous current flow allowed further study for of electricity. When the wires and the battery complete a circuit, charge flows through the meter. Two dissimilar metals cause charge to flow through the meter. When the dime and the penny are stuck into the lemon, charge flows through the meter. When two pennies are stuck into the lemon, no charge flows through the meter. The nickel and quarter cause charge to flow. There are two conductors and an electrolyte. The two dissimilar conductors provide the potential difference that produces a current through the light bulb. Michael Faraday in 1832 discovered that conductors when moved through magnetic fields could also produce an electric current and that led to the invention of electric generators. So here's an early uh, electric generator by Faraday, a disk uh, electric generator. Here's a modern uh, electric generator down here where we have these uh, coils of wire that we're going to spin through uh, the past these mag magnets here to produce the electricity. And then this is a huge electric generator you can see by the size relative to this woman sitting there. So Michael Faraday's invention of the generator is really what uh, leads us to the kind of uh, power that we use with electricity today. So there are various voltage sources as we've seen. Um, the three main sources of electricity today, as mentioned, the, the big, big, big one are, are electric generators. Then uh, the next uh, most used are batteries and these are becoming more prevalent now and in, in electric cars and of course in cell phones and, and other appliances and then uh, we also use solar cells uh, and uh, those are becoming more predominant as well but for low power kind of uh, operations here and uh, generators though are uh, the main source and generators, the unfortunate thing though, is that generators are turned by turbines that are driven by power plants using various sources of coal uh, burning or natural gas burning. There are some uh, nuclear and hydroelectric and wind and other renewables uh, that add up to all of our energy use for electricity. Um, but again, a lot of electricity, we think of electricity as a very clean source of energy and yet a big chunk of electricity here is uh, generated by burning coal, <clears throat> another part by uh, burning natural gas. Um, so we're hoping that we can uh, continue to increase the this uh, form of uh, renewable energy in this slice and make that 4% much, much larger in the future. So what do all of these sources have in common? got uh, the various types of sources and what they all have in common is they have some way to separate charge so uh, electrons are typically what are pulled off or separated from the protons and uh, we end up with an excess negative charge and an excess positive charge when we 
pull those two apart. And therefore, there's an attractive force. Remember that opposites attract. And uh, so the amount of force is proportional to how much charge you have on each of these multiplied together. And remember that the uh, uh, force constant here is a very large number. And, uh, and the distance, though, between them, the bigger the distance, the less the uh, force is. But typically, these are pretty small distances uh, in the circuits that we're dealing with here. So this is Coulomb's Law. And that's what all of this, those sources have in common. They create an electric force. And let's talk about the next idea called potential difference. If we have an electric force here, you'll remember that it's very much like gravity as far as the structure of the equation. Uh, with gravity, uh, we had a force uh, pulling down, which is uh, mg. And if we raised that weight, mg, which was really the same as this force, uh, particular height in a gravitational field, we got gravitational potential energy. So this is potential energy, the U. And uh, if we look here and we say that this potential energy is due to this mass being raised a certain height in this gravitational field, this quantity, the acceleration due to gravity times the height, would maybe, well, what we could call gravitational potential difference. We don't do that with gravity systems, but that's what potential difference would be in a gravity system here. And uh, it would be that quantity that we would multiply by a particular mass to give potential energy. And uh, that's related to this gravitational system. In an electrical system, electrical potential energy is equal to K, the constant, times Q1 times Q2 divided by the distance between them. The square got dropped here, so that's the electrical potential energy. Therefore, like over here, we multiplied GH by the mass of concern. If this is our charge that's going to move around the circuit, the negative or elect elect uh, electrons moving around the circuit, then this part right here would be what we would call the electrical potential difference or the electrical potential. And so that is useful in electrical circuits. We use this quite a bit. And electrical potential right here is what we also will call voltage. So this is one way to look at it. And when we look at it this way, we call it electrical potential. Notice that the only difference between electrical potential energy and electrical potential difference or electrical potential is that other Q here. So electrical potential energy is equal to the charge times the potential difference in this electrical system. Please take a note of potential difference. Now that you've taken notes and let absorb this a little bit more, let's talk about it just a little bit longer. Notice what this is really saying here. This KQ1R is all related to this charge on this object over here and how far away this charge is. So from this charge's perspective right here, Q2, what this potential is, is this potential tell, talks about the potential of kinetic energy that can be built up depending on how much charge this object has. The kinetic energy can be built up as it charges towards Q1 right here. Uh, depends on how big the charge Q1 is, how far away it is, and the electrical constant. So this potential is really how this, uh, how much this is being affected by this at this particular distance. How much this charge will be affected by this charge at this particular distance. Kind of like our gravity system over here, this mass is going to pick up a certain amount of kinetic energy based on two things, how much it's accelerated and how long, what distance it's accelerated over. And so the uh, analog here, the analogy here, is GH in this model is equivalent to QR in this particular model. And then we also have the electric constant in there. Now that we know about potential difference and potential energy and so forth, we can look at another uh, way to look at potential difference. And that other way to look at potential difference is called voltage.
So we're going to define voltage. You probably, you've probably you heard of voltage, I'm confident. Uh, so what is it? Well, if you recall, the potential energy uh, from the last slide is equal to the charge times the potential difference. And potential energy is what allows a system to do work. So if I equate work here with uh, Q times V, the potential difference, then I can uh, simply, to find voltage here, this V, I can uh, divide both sides by Q if, after I've equated these, and here's what we get. That voltage is equal to the amount of work done per charge. Hey, isn't this V the potential difference? Yes, it is the same as the potential difference, but it's defined a little bit differently from a different perspective. Now that we have this potential difference, this voltage is what we call it now, that voltage can do a certain amount of work to move a particular amount of charge. Notice that work is equal to force times distance. So voltage really is how much force there is times the distance to move each charge around a particular circuit here. So the battery here is developing the voltage by separating the charge and creating this force of Coulomb's law by separating the charge. And then those charges are moved around this circuit a particular distance and uh, that work right here, force times distance, is divided amongst all the charges that are moved around the circuit. So that's what voltage does. Voltage provides the, the uh, work to move the charge around a circuit. Voltage is across. Voltage is present across a source or component and drives a current through a circuit. For example, if we have our battery here and we're separating the charge here uh, and, and the negative charge is driven to the cathode and the positive charge is, is driven to the anode or the positive terminal, there is a separation here across this source. And it's that potential difference that uh, is creating that uh, is created by that separation of charge. And so it's a difference in potential that creates the uh, impetus, if you will, to move the charge. Well, the charge moving in the circuit is the current. When the charge moves in the circuit, when it's hard to go through this thing called a resistor, this resistance here, um, it is forced, the current's forced through this resistance because there is a potential difference across this resistance. We'll see that more clearly in the future. But nonetheless, voltage goes across a particular component to do the work to power that component. So this is a big idea that voltage is across components and sources and current is what goes through. There's a misconception. People say, oh, a certain amount of voltage went through that, per through that and that's not right. Voltage doesn't go through anything. Voltage is across. What goes through the circuit or through something is the current. As I mentioned a moment ago, voltage is measured in volts, V. Voltage uh, is represented like this. Uh, v is equal to 12 volts. And uh, these would be the circuit symbols for a particular circuit with voltage. This is the most common uh, symbol for a battery now, showing the anode of the battery and the cathode of a battery. This long side is the positive side, and the short side here is the negative side. And then you would label the voltage off to the side over here. You wouldn't write battery because when you see the symbol, uh, it is a battery. And obviously you know what batteries are. Over here would be our circuit symbol showing the uh, alternating current. This is a sine wave symbol showing uh, the uh, wave nature of the current going in and out of uh, an alternating current source. Uh, these alternating current sources are most commonly uh, our outlets that we plug into and uh, this electricity is created with uh, electric generators. And Scratch's parting thought. And use that potential as you strive for continuous improvement.